our alumni really do uh, get jobs that take them all over the world. So um, we continue to do this event uh, on Zoom. And I think we're going to start today uh, with Skylar Kim, and uh, she'll introduce herself, but I'll just say ahead of time, we want to congratulate her. She got the silver award at the J Live Talk National Competition. And that's to her credit and also to, of course, our amazing language, um, our amazing, amazing language teachers. Um, and she won, uh, she got uh, she's now in the Kakehashi program, so she's uh, actually in Japan now. So, Skylar, I'm going to let you uh, say more about those things and um, talk with us for a while. Thank you so much. Uh, let me start actually sharing my screen. Let's see, right over here. All right. Okay. Great. Hi, guys. Um, I'm just here to explain my experiences at JLive and at Kakehashi. It was both, I feel like, a sudden, um, I guess, experience for me that I was able to relocate into my memories. And with further ado, I will start ahead. So a little bit about me is that I'm Skylar, as you've already heard. I'm still a student at Eleanor Roosevelt College at UC San Diego. I'm double majoring in literature writing as well as Japanese studies. And right now I am also minoring in Korean studies as well. Unfortunately, we don't have a Korean minor, but they'll have to do at the moment. I can't be too greedy all at once, but this is what I'm working with. And I am a third year level of Japanese. I am currently a sophomore and I have learned from Mariana Sensei and as well as just recently Tokura Sensei who has helped me so much on my J Live talk. So with further ado, let's continue down. So then J Live talk is held at the George Washington University in DC. And I went there, it was such an amazing experience. I met so many wonderful people. I presented on the topics of bullying, mental health, and also the lack of awareness for disabilities. And with that presentation, I was able to connect with not only Japan's culture with America, but also added a little incorporation of Korean culture as well. So this was just an experience for me to be able to talk to everyone about my point of view and my thoughts on about the society right now and what I hope that we can work on further. So this is the process. Um, we have four different categories. There are four different levels. And thankfully, um, I was able to coordinate myself with the help of Tokuda Sensei. And I was coordinated into college level two. And just simply speaking, uh, we have three rounds, two rounds, which are video, which is completely online. So this was very beneficial for us who are actually not in DC uh, in person, but at the final round, you are invited to present your topic in DC and at the Georgetown University. So it was amazing experience for me. I went there, um, I was actually surprised that I made it past round one because I knew about this J Live in my class, in my 138 class. Um, possibly a little less than 24 hours in advance, but I was able to turn it in nonetheless of my two minute speech, then made it into second round, which was, I was so blessed to have, and then made it to final round where I was so excited to finally, I guess, go somewhere new by myself. And of course, Tokuda Sensei came with me and joined me and she was so sweet. She cheered me on from over there and as well as my classmates who made me a good luck video that I will forever cherish. But I was also surprised by my family members at the airport um, who just showed up and said they were my Uber and I had no idea. And so that was also an experience for me as well. So moving on, it was also a six minute speech for me uh, for college level two. It's a little bit different by each level, but I did a six minute speech, memorized and gave a presentation as well as there were four questions. Three questions were given from the judges, one of the judges, and one of the question was from the audience member. So you don't really know 
what's coming at you. You can practice so much on your speech, but you don't really know what's going to come at you for the questions. So there's only so little that you can practice for that. I practiced my speech like a madman. Honestly, I practiced wherever, whenever I could. It was insane. And my roommate was so worried about me because she said that she heard me in the shower and thought I was talking with someone. And that's where my top locations where I would continue to practice my speech before I went there in person. But that was my experience for J Live. And thankfully, I was um, able to get into second round. And well, not second round, second place. And just a little um, information is that there's only 12 contestants at the final round. And I was one of the three for my college level. So um, that was just less competition in a way, but also more competition because there's only so few of us to compete against each other. But the people there was so amazing that I was able to actually connect with them, people that have interest as me and people that are learning what I always wanted to learn. And it was such a wonderful experience for us to gather in this one location to express our true feelings about Japanese. And moving on, um, I was awarded the second place award at J Live. But the next day while I was coming back home in midair in the plane, I checked my phone in my email and then it was a J Live executive director that contacted me saying that she wanted to nominate me for the Kakehashi Project. And the Kakehashi Project is an award that is given out to specifically just Japanese speech consciousness winners, but it is only given out to one person of the whole finalist um, contestants at J Live. And I was the one that they had chosen me. And it was such, I guess, a thrilling, but also sort of heart-wrenching that made me cry on the plane. But it was amazing because I got to meet, um, I guess, other US contestants, but as well as Canada. I was able to meet some new and great friends over this seven day tour, which is also sponsored by MOFA, Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Japan. And we were given lectures and in that time frame, this was just last week, so I'm still currently in Japan. So we also had a host family, which I was very excited for, get to experience, I guess, more of the countryside of Japan that I feel like aren't really represented fully in anyone's like Japan's travels or stays. So that was a wonderful experience as well as school exchange partially where we had university school students um, just give us a little tour. And then continuing on, we went to the prime minister's um, official residence and we were able to actually hear a speech from the deputy chief. So there's a photo down there as well. I'm sorry, there's a lot of photos on the right side. We did so many things in the seven day tour. So it was a little exhausting, but then, oh my gosh, I loved it. And continuing on at the very last day, we were given um, time to give ourselves and to the fellow, I guess, of the tour mates of our presentation of what we learned and what we plan to do in the future. And with that, we also went to Yokohama, we went to Shizuoka, and there were so many places that we went to that we just, I think, like touched upon almost all of the prefectures around Tokyo. Oh, that was amazing. And moving on about my future goals is that this is what I have planned at the moment. Um, although plans might always change in the future, but I will be studying abroad. I am actually going to be studying abroad. I'll be moving to Korea around Valentine's to study at Seoul National University for just a semester until this summer. And afterwards, I guess it's a bit back to back, but I plan to also uh, study abroad at Waseda University for a year and hope to really engrowth my Japanese levels over there, hopefully. And then also I will be teaching slash volunteering. I don't know if you've already heard this, um, but we had um, Kumi also give us an well, email earlier about come on out Japan. And that really spoke with me as well because I want to become a writer, but the thing is, I don't want to be in debt after I graduate. And I know that um, Come On Out Japan is going to be 
I guess, somewhat of a glimpse of what I can work with in JET program. And it's something that I've always been interested in about teaching. And of course, since writing is my major portion that I do want to accomplish, but also English is what I am working with currently as my major. So I'll be working across with that. And then hopefully in the future, I'll be able to get through JET program as some of you may know already and as well as EPIC program, which is a teaching program in Korea. It's very similar to JET. And I learned about that in Yokohama because one of the students, um, graduate students at IUC speaking with me and he also went to Korea and Japan, of course, to teach English. And I thought that was such an amazing experience that I wanted to also experience myself. So then studying and writing, I do want to continue my Japanese level up whatever I can to do, and as well as just writing my way through all of my experience that I can to just, I guess, tell others about what I am working with and about the experiences that it's only so little can get. And I was so happy that one of, I guess, um, the professors also talked to me at DC, but also a writer and a director had spoken with me and I've actually been interviewed for her upcoming short film that I'll be excited to talk about as well. But that is my presentation of J Live and Kakehashi. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Skylar. Um, and congratulations again. Um, yeah, it's 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 just lovely to see the recognition you got. And I think also, uh, I just want to once again, recognize the language program here and all of you who teach in it. Uh, we all know that uh, accomplishments like Skylar's are not possible without the dedication and also just the brilliant instruction we have here. Um, I'm going to move on to the alumni uh, folks now, and I'm going, there's no particular order here, but um, the way I have written them down, I'm going to start with Mandy, uh, Mandy Jong, who's on JET and is currently the CIR, which I learned it means Coordinator for International Relations. Mandy, would you start? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mandy, and I um, I graduated back in spring of 2022 as a, uh, with a double major in Japanese Studies and Economics. Um, yeah, currently I am working in Japan as a coordinator for international relations, which is also um, part of the JET program. Um, I am mainly doing the translation and interpretation part rather than teaching English, but I also do uh, teach English uh, to citizens and um, city hall employees. Yeah, very nice to see everyone here today. Thank you for having me. So uh, we're going to do more or less the same questions for each of our alumni. And I think, uh, Mandy, first, we'd like you to talk about what uh, you most enjoyed about the Japanese studies major and Japanese studies language uh, courses and just whatever um, you enjoyed about the Japanese studies program. Um, I really... Um liked how uh, for the upper division language classes that we got to talk about a lot of different stuff, um, such as um, current events, um, pop cultures, and like environmental issues such as the SDGs, which um, I got to use a lot of the um, things I learned from the Japanese studies to my current work now. I do uh, translate a lot of stuff that are related to SDGs. And I'm really glad that I uh, learned that here in UC at SD. And um, I also really like the uh, 135 classes that we get to uh, start our own project and work uh, with a group. And uh, one of my, uh, what is it? Project proposal, actually I got to um, do it in person here in Japan about like a crafting session that I, uh, uh, as a part of the uh, culture, culture introduction of the American um, Christmas and Halloween. So I found out it's a very nice um, experience 
to have, you know, plan our things by myself and actually, you know, doing it um, here in Japan. So I found it very helpful. And yeah, that's I, you know what I talk about. Said, yes, yeah. so what, what you just said also kind of leads directly into another thing we wanted to hear from you, which is uh, the the kinds of, you know, one thing undergraduates always wonder is what's the connection between their major and their professional goals? And it's interesting that you started with the um, way in which some specific project work is actually useful to you now. But do you have other things, do uh, you have some general ideas about how your uh, work here and in the program contributed to your uh, professional goals after graduation? Um, I would say definitely, um, I wanted to use my Japanese skills, of course, as a Japanese major. So I um, believe that uh, the Japanese studies program definitely helped me a lot in my Japanese speaking skills, writing skills, and uh, which is definitely useful here in what I'm uh, working right now and uh, how like uh, what is it, public speaking skills too. Like I got to do some really, uh, ser well, not that serious, but I got to participate uh, in the G7 transport minister meeting here in Japan. And although I'm more like a si assistant, but I got to, you know, talk to the a very, you know, uh very international um like big events and yeah it's very um exciting to be there too and yeah it was a very good uh, learning process for me too as uh, oh listening to other people um doing the interpretation and, and, and uh, how they you know uh, introduce the guests it was like very amazing and I feel like yeah the Japanese skills that I learned here and also the per, uh, interpersonal skills are really um, helpful to me uh, as I'm working right now yeah um, finally um, we'd like to have you um, say if there's some current some message that you think would be helpful to give to the current undergraduates um, yeah Ah, of course, I would say that because our, our program is so amazing. We, I love how we have um, smaller classes, which, of course, you get to connect with the uh, professors easier and then how you can, you know, talk with your peers. And I believe um, it would be very nice to, you know, um, make friends with your peers for sure and how you guys could be, you know, traveling to Japan maybe in the future as travel bud buddies. I actually met several of my uh, UCSC friends here in Japan too. And we got to like go around and travel around together. And I would say, yeah, um, utilize, you know, uh, your time here and um, yeah, talk, go to your professors, um, what is it? office hours and yeah get to know them more and yeah they will also um give you advices and for um uh, and how to you know let your interests um go beyond just studying but like you know make it to your uh, professional work and whatever your future leads you to yeah thank you um okay. I, I i uh thank you very much mandy Be and i wanted to uh, say something I forgot to say before you started to the group. Um, we want to take some questions if you have questions or want each of our alumni to say something a little more about what they presented. And feel free to put things in the chat while people are talking because then we can come back to them. But then when we're done, we'll also have about, you know, 20 minutes or or half hour perhaps for uh, general discussion, but is, is there any um, any question uh, that you'd like to ask Mandy now before we move on? You can either raise your hand or put something in the chat if there is. Okay, I don't see anything yet. So Mandy, I did have one one question that came to my mind for for the sake of the undergraduates who are here today. You're a CIE, a CIR, and many people who wanted to go to JET would be ALTs, the language teachers. 
Would you say something about um, the, you, you talked about the way the program helped you with uh, your CIR work and you know a lot of ALTs of course, because of your position. Is there a way in which you would like to just advise people who might like to go to JET about the connection between what they're doing now and what they would gain from JET? Yeah, um, that's a really nice question. I would say if you are interested in teaching English to like students, maybe uh, ALT would be the way to go. But in my case, I rather than teaching English, I was uh, hoping to, you know, gain more experience in translating and interpreting because that's what I'm a little bit more interested in. And so I would say um, depends on the skills you want to maybe um, think about that part. And uh, so for me, I uh, the CIRs uh, would be placed into very uh, different locations such as city halls or the tourism sections, or even sometimes the, at the BOEs, which is the Board of, the Ed, uh, Board of Education. But usually for ALT, it's only uh, to the Board of Education where, where all the school, um, yeah everything's about the schools so it depends on uh, the the CIRs you have a lot more um can't say a lot more jobs and more different kinds of jobs depend on where you're placed uh, so for me I also went on some business trip uh overseas in Palau uh, as an interpreter and I got to you know sometimes to um uh, go uh, attend events uh, in Tokyo and uh, some other parts in Japan too. So it would be very different on, you know, the, the experience and what you're actually working as, yeah. Uh, Mandy, I see two mm -hmm. uh, questions. Um, I'll read you both and you can answer them and then we'll move to the next person. I thought we'd move to Jackie next. Um, uh, Derek asks, um, what is the most rewarding part of being a CIR? And then Gwen asks, uh, did you, Gwen O'Brien asked, did you come across any unexpected challenges in your CIR work? So rewards and challenges. Oh, thank you so much for the questions. Um, so I would say the most awarding part, uh, rewarding part would be um, how, you know, I get to uh, see a lot of people attend many interesting events that I probably wouldn't have the chance to. And, you know, just little bit by little, um, uh, you know, uh, develop my uh, language skills <laughs> and also uh, just get to, you know, live in Japan. It's amazing. Yeah. And uh, any unexpected challenges? I would say a lot of times uh, they usually ask me to do some interpretations last minute, which is um, going to be like very um, hard to prepare for. So I would say I um, just got used to I getting a request and be like, okay, time to do it now. So it's like um, very um, fast paced in a way, but sometimes there's like uh, nothing else to do, which I would be like either doing a little bit of studies or reading on my own. And yeah, that's how mm -hmm. my life is as a CIR right now. Yeah, thank you very much. Mandy, thank you very much. And we'll, uh, Mandy will be part of the open discussion at the end as well for other questions. So. Feel free if something comes to mind while we're moving uh, on to put questions for anyone um, in the chat. Uh, Jackie, so Jackie Young is, I'm gonna let her also do a self-introduction. She's working um, doing PR and in a media company. And Jackie, I'm gonna turn to you next. Yeah, thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Yeah, my name is uh, Jacqueline Yang, or Jackie, go ahead and call me that. Um, but yeah, I do work at Wick Media. It's a digital PR and marketing company. Um, so we deal with digital media. So anything in regards to, you know, online media. So if you see a picture online or a video online um, for advertisement or um, news about companies, um, basically, that's something that my company does. Um, so then we start with um, what you most enjoyed about your Japanese studies program activities, major or language uh, classes, etc. So what what did you most enjoy as an undergraduate? 
Yeah. So I think um, everybody, you know, when you get into Japanese studies, obviously you have some sort of interest in Japan, right? And so for me, I think very much it was interesting learning about, you know, just Japan in general, but even more so um, very sort of technical and high concept um, sort of uh, ideas with Japan. So things such as uh, politics, history, anything such as that. Um, particularly, I do like I did like more of the contemporary um, sort of topics that we had. So it'd be contemporary social issues or um, just um, technological ones such as um, SDGs, as mentioned as before. Um, so those were very interesting to me, um, just because again, it felt very relevant. And obviously, sometimes, um, you know, you kind of want to learn something relevant, uh, just so you can make a connection to modern day, um, even if uh, history is interesting. Again, that modern day connection really, I think helps you see your level and how much you um, learned about Japan. So that was very interesting and um, uh, very favorable to me. And then, um, like with Mandy, what what kind of contributions do you think your Japanese studies work has made to your professional careers? Uh, I think it basically uh, contributed basic everything to it. Um, obviously, again, it sort of made me even more passionate about learning about Japan because I was learning about these contemporary issues ongoing with Japan and even more so because that was my interest. And in PR, obviously you have to know what's happening currently in the world, whether it be in Japan or how it's affecting America from Japan. And so, you know, me being familiar with these ideas and then, you know, seeing them mentioned in my work, I'm able to easily can make the connection and be like, oh, I know about that, so I can help with that. And then because I also learned about it in Japanese language, um, me being able to sort of recognize those in, you know, Japanese writing or whenever it's talked about um, in Japanese, I'm also able to recognize it. So honestly, the whole major is basically my work. That's very interesting. Um, it, it, yeah. Okay. So that that's a very interesting comment about sort of just gaining enough familiarity that that you're sort of prepared for a wide range of of, of things that come up. Um, so do you have any, uh, messages for current undergraduates? What would you, what do you think they, that you would like them to know? Yeah, I would say just sort of figure out what you're passionate about and then try to figure out how you can integrate Japan or your Japanese skills into it. Um, so for example, for me, I'm obviously very into digital media. So for me, I'm interested in how, you know, videos are edited or, um, you know, how we're marketed to with, um, you know. Uh, art online and so for me I figured why don't I integrate um, how Japan does theirs compared to American takes on you know advertising or just um, you know art or um, videos on YouTube or anything such as that and then from that I was able to slowly build my own portfolio from my interest and then use that for my professional work so you know even if it's something as simple um, something as simple as watching TikTok videos from Japan you know I think that's a great way for you to just at the very least practice your Japanese and then you know learn from there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jackie. That's really interesting. Could you say just a, a word? I'll have a question. Then if others have a question, put them in the chat or raise your hand. But um, what do you what is your specific task in your job? What, what so do for you me, do every day? Um, yeah, I'm a digital content specialist. So basically what that means is updating, um, particularly for my company, we update websites for um, certain companies, um, and some of them are Japanese um, car companies. And so because that, you know, for instance, if you see any news from Honda or, you know, Mitsubishi or Nissan, that's um, where my company works at. And so we help them publish any sort of uh, news from their company. And then, you know, if they have new pictures about their cars or videos about their cars, um, we're the ones that update their websites for it. Um, and we do it both for their American um, websites and also their Japan websites. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so are there any questions before we move to the next person? Okay, so put uh, additional questions for uh, Jacqueline in the chat, and we will come back to it. Uh, Megan, you're up next. Megan uh, Murata is, uh, she actually was on JET for a number of years, I think three? Three, it was three, yeah. <laughs> And uh, she now works um, at the Japan Foundation in Los Angeles. So she's coming to us from LA. Megan? Yeah. Thank you, Professor Turner. Yeah, so um, as Professor Turner introduced me, I'm Megan Murata. Um, I'm currently, this is now the start of my second year at the Japan Foundation in Los Angeles, where I am a associate program coordinator. Um, in this specific case, it means that I oversee two of the four language grants that we offer. And actually, um, Skylar 
the J Live Talk is a is an event that the J Japan Foundation Los Angeles supports. Um, so I was very surprised to come across that today <laughs> in this situation. <laughs> um, but small world, very small world. Yeah. Um, so I uh, our alumni graduated are on both sides of that. That's very <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's actually um, one Great. of the grants that I manage. So I am much more involved with that than um, some of the other events that we support. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I graduated 2019. Um, I went on Jet for three years as an ALT down in Yamaguchi Prefecture, and then I returned and uh, wanted to find a position where I could continue to utilize and grow my Japanese skills, especially in the business setting, um, with the aim of eventually returning to working and living in Japan. And what did you most enjoy about your Japanese studies major? Why did you pick that major? Yes. Um, so <laughs> this, is, this comes from, um, so growing up, um, as you can tell from my name, um, I'm half Japanese. Um, my father's Japanese and he would read manga to me and like translate it on the fly. Um, and I thought that was the coolest thing since sliced bread as a five-year-old. I was like, yes, this is my goal. <laughs> um, so when it came time to choose colleges and college majors, I went, well, I'm definitely going to be doing at least some Japanese. So why don't we just make that my major and kind of went from there. Um, in terms of what I enjoyed most about the Japanese studies program at UCSD was the number of language classes, as well as the breadth of other classes that we could take, we can take, um, that relate to Japan. Um, so I really enjoyed exploring the history side of things, um, similar to Jackie. Um, I really enjoyed a, uh, Japanese modern politics course. That was really, really interesting. Um, and of course, I really enjoyed the capstone seminar with Professor Turner, um, as well as writing my honors thesis. Um, so, or three honors theses in a trench coat, one of the two. Um, wow. So being able to, you know, really explore and pursue things that I was passionate about, as well as um, really network, like when studying abroad at ICU, um, I've definitely found that the Japanese community, both in terms of the language learners and people, you know, with any kind of connection to Japan, um, can be quite small in a really interesting ways. Um, and so that's also been very interesting to see how, like, I've been accidentally networking um, a lot. Um. <laughs> And so contributions to your professional goals. Um, I think there may be some very close connections there, but would you like to say yeah. a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, my ultimate goal is um, to return to Japan and live and work there once again. Um, so obviously having a solid foundation in Japanese, both in terms of language and culture um, is, has served me well, both as a JET in my current position um, where we use a lot of Japanese in the office um, because that's most of my coworkers' first language um, to say nothing of, you know, the various people that we're speaking with, be it for grants or for other kinds of events that we support. Um, and also, I mean, just, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much the foundation for what I want to do going forward. So, yeah. Um, and then finally, do you have, uh, are there any messages you'd like to uh, send to the current undergrads? What should they know? Um, I mean, at this point, I think sometimes the world can be pretty dark looking, um, especially when it comes to finding jobs. Um, but one, I think you've come with a pretty decent network um, of past alumni and other people who you might know from study abroad, um, or from clubs, what have you. Um, so I'd say try and go for it, whatever it is, whatever you decide to do, um, job or not, hobby or not, program or not, go for it. Pretty much the worst thing that can happen is they say no. And you say, okay, well, what do I learn from this? They're not, you know, rejecting you as a person. It's maybe you're just not the fit that they're looking for right now. So you're like, okay, cool. What's next? Kind of go from there. Um, yes. So, uh, Kumi just put in the chat that Megan has shared some of the recruiters, um, that might, I suppose, be 
um, part of a network you could uh, uh, rely on or or try to use. So uh, take a look at that. And there's a question in the chat uh, from Gwen O'Brien. How did you deal with uncertainty during your path? Um, really talking about it with my friends. Um, I mean, I've made a bunch of friends on JET. I made a bunch of friends um, at UCSD and studying abroad. And much like um, I think Mandy said earlier, it's um, really cool how you can find so many people who have such a similar direction to you. So very frequently, it wasn't just me dealing with uncertainty. It was my friends as well dealing with uncertainty. So we kind of ended up just pinging ideas back and forth to each other um, or sharing resources, be it, you know, oh, hey, I found this job posting on this website. Or, um, I mean, didn't you say like a couple months ago that you really enjoyed doing this thing? Uh, how about trying something there? Did you think of that yet? Maybe. Um, and so having friends in a similar boat, as well as friends who've found their pathway a lot more easily than I have, um, and just bouncing ideas off of them um, has been of a, of a great help, really. Um, you know, the, um, and I thought I would take that question back to uh, Jacqueline too, because um, I think this is something that is actually uh, really on people's minds now. So Jackie, would you like to say how you dealt with uh, uncertainty during your path at post-graduation? Um, it was, um, mine was a very bumpy rough, um, uh, path just cause I graduated in 2020. So, you know, y'all had to deal with the whole oh, COVID, uh, quarantine yeah. shutdown. Um, definitely, uh, there was a lot of uncertainty there, but I think for me is because I was dead set on using my, my major in Japanese studies, I just sort of, um, figured out what else can I do with this. And so again, like I said, my passion was in digital media and, so I figured, um, what can I do with digital media and Japanese um, language, right? And so for me, I just kept saying, well, let me better my Japanese skills through digital media and also make sure I have some sort of certification that's similar to it so I can back up my skills. And so, you know, while I was out here working on various contract jobs, and then I was um, working on getting my certifications for, again, things that are related to digital media with Japan. Um, I think this also touched upon the question we kind of missed from Kumi about how I got my job. But essentially, that's how I got my job was that I continuously worked on getting certifications while utilizing my skills of Japanese in Japanese media. And then eventually, I was able to get my current job that I have now, which is, again, updating um websites because I was able to get um, certifications in website development as well. So yeah, definitely just um, continue working, you know, no matter how hard and bleak it might seem, just continue building your skills and eventually someone will recognize the skill that you have. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and um, so thank you to all three of you. And I wanted now to add, I just wanted to call on one person who happens to be present today but who was in Japan when we first started recruiting people, but we have another alumni. Uh, and uh, Derek said, and I did check with him before calling on him, cold call, but I wanted Derek to give you a chance to um, also say whatever you'd like that are on these same topics that we've been talking about because uh, Derek works for Google. So he's one of our, we, we have actually quite a few people who graduate from with experience in our program who are coming uh, uh, as well from STEM fields. Um, and I would like to ask Derek if he has, I would like to also talk about what he most enjoyed in the program contribution to his professional goals and, and so on. So Derek, would you, and thank you for agreeing to talk even though we didn't prepare you for that. Yeah, thank you. We're so happy you're here. <laughs> thank, thank you, Professor Turner. Yeah, so I was I was really really honored to be to, to participate in this event, especially hearing um some some of some 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 my some my um, fellow classmates and like seeing some familiar faces. For and yes, I did I I did I did graduate with 
computer science with a, with a minor in Japanese studies. And for me, I think what I got out of the 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 Japanese studies program is kind of like a cultural cultural awareness that I ended up developing myself. Uh, when I, when, I, when I was finally able to like visit Japan for the first time, actually this time of last year. And the thing that I came to came to become increasingly passionate about is actually like some of like some of the things we could use or some of the things we as software de software developers could use for some for 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 some for some for some, for, for some social goods. Um during during my during my stay, during my stay in Japan, I got I got I got I got to I got to know some I got to know one person who is behind a no a a disaster notific disaster notification software known as Nerve. And during and and during the Noto Peninsula earthquake, this this past this past month, it, it gained a lot of exposure. So it was it was, it's it's just it's just like um. Through the through 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 data through data visualization, we we could we could we could say create 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 alerts that are fifteen to twenty seconds faster than like your typical your typical so cool on TV, and I and that and that and that and that and that kind of thing have become increasingly passionate about. So. I had I had some, I had some I had some comments about the for for the, for the for your panelists that 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 are present today, and to 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 Mandy. I I really I really think that I do agree with you. With like our 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 exposure to like learning current current events was is was, was especially important in in develop in develop our of our respective passions, like. I well, know we took we took we took we took we took one fifty together, and we had to do like um a whole thing on the presidential election. That kind of, that 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 kind of, that kind of, that kind of thing trans translate to what we what we, what we learned about what what I, what I what I came to what I came to learn about in like different natural 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 disasters such as the this past this past this this past one. And the and the nineteen ninety five COVID COVID earthquake, and then to to and then and then and then and then to ja and then to Jacqueline, this one this one's got, this one's kind of a more lighthearted comment in that um, it's it's funny it's funny it's funny that you mentioned that you that that you're that you're the one creating the news, my 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 work my my work manages the monetization of said news. It's very it's very funny. And and to, and to and to Megan, I really resound with your like message of trying to go for it. But for me, I had a, I had, I had a caveat because the tech the tech industry the tech industry right now is quite turbulent. So while I, while I, while I, while I want to like reach for reach reach for opportunities that will get me to Japan as well, I I try I try I try, I try to do it in moderation such that. If I if I if if I if I fall at least I have like um, a parachute of sorts if you will. Yeah, that that, that was my spiel. I think that I think that I probably got was a little more, longer than I, I was originally expecting. Yeah, that's very interesting, Derek. And I think parachutes are very useful in the current economy, right? Um, so thank you, and, and thank you to all of you for these uh, presentations. And at this point, I think we want to open it to. Um, any questions that you have personal or uh, that is to say things that you're thinking about for um, uh, for the our undergraduates, things that you'd like to know how people managed. So um, yeah, so please either put in the chat or raise your hand and you can ask questions to any of our uh, panelists.
I actually have a question for everyone. <laughs> I know all of you and, you know, you were fantastic students, but I'm pretty sure that, you know, because the your interests, you know, in Japan and the, in the language and the culture, of course, led you to major, you know, minoring in Japanese studies. But, um, you know, compared to the other mega majors, like, you know, what what made you think that, this is what you wanted to do with an actual, you know, academic career, right? Um, because some students, especially with their parents, really focus on like other fields like STEM. It can be a little frightening to jump into a major or minor that really focuses on culture and language. Mm -hmm. But I just want to tell everyone like, no, there are so many job opportunities, so many things you could do with the skills that you learn through our programs, but it's very hard <laughs> to, um, for some of the students or prospective students to pursue that, even though that's their interest. So what do you, what kind of message do you have to those who are still kind of hesitant to try that? Because I'll be sharing this video so even though they're, they might not be here, I'll be sharing it on the Instagram and Facebook and hopefully your message will reach to them. So that's why I wanted to ask you that question. That's a great question, Kumi. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, so the rest of my family is all STEM majors. Um, so I'm kind of the, the black sheep, if you will. Um, but I would I would say for those looking to jump even just for a minor or to continue to build up their coursework so that it becomes a minor or a double major, what have you, um, language skills and cultural skills can be something of kind of a, an ace up your sleeve or like a golden bracelet that you can pull out as something extra that enhances both your experiences as a person um, makes you more attractive to potential employers because it shows that it helps show that um, you're maybe more open-minded, more worldly. And I think that in an increasingly global economy, that that is something that more people are looking for. And it's also a good indicator that you're pretty good at communicating because ultimately that is what language is for. It's for communication. Um, so not to take away from the STEM field at all, but I think it can definitely be kind of a an ace up your sleeve in those situations. Do I mind if I add something to this? Yeah. I will I I will say, like having having the language skills is actually surprisingly uh, if you want to like get like a decent paying tech job in Japan, as I try to apply from or for for a medical career. Early, earlier this year is that they want language skills also like you I mean sure I can code but just like if I it's literally on their job re requirements that you must have this level of Japanese language skill yeah and I think I can add to that in saying that for sure just in general learning another language is very helpful for your career but I think even more specifically with Japan and Japanese having knowledge about it, it's very impactful in our current world, um, just because obviously there's the technological side of Japan being innovative, um, but even more so in terms of just almost every aspect of our lives, um, from food to entertainment, I think Japan is making more and more of an impact on the Western world at the very least. Um, and I know this for sure, because before my current job, I worked for a PR company that helped Japanese companies uh, market to American ones. So things such as um, the candy company Lotte or um, just other food ones, um, even um, ones such as Viz Media for, you know, manga and anime, I helped um, sort of write articles for them. And so, you know, they were trying to figure out like, hey, we know that our stuff is getting interested in America, but how do we market to them? And so for sure, like there is a market for anything related to Japan, whether it be technology or, you know, digital entertainment or anything such as that. So I feel like that's why even more so it's very, um, it'd be very good to have some sort of knowledge about Japan and Japanese language. Yeah, I can't say anything else, but I do agree with all of you guys. And I think 
Jap having another language is definitely uh, very useful in like opening other jobs opportunities. And uh, for me personally, um, I also speak Chinese. So as part of my Jap program, or well, as a CIR, I actually also do some of the Chinese translations and interpretation in addition to doing the Japanese to English. So I would say it definitely opens up opportunities and jobs for you. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I will add one thing to this conversation um, uh, about this this question, and that is from a previous alumni event where we had one of our uh, our majors um, who is currently a pharmacist uh, at Scripps uh, Health. And when asked a similar question, she said that uh, in every interview she had, both getting into pharmacy school at USC, and for her uh, residencies, as well as her current job at Scripps Health, uh, when they saw on her resume that she was a double major in cell biology and Japanese studies, the whole interview, like most of the interview was about why she was in Japanese studies and what she had done. Because it was the thing that was not common on all the other, uh, in the end, it was the thing that set her apart because she had this kind of breadth of um, interests as well as skills. So in her view, although it's really, it, it would be very difficult on an organizational chart or in trying to explain why you want to do a Japanese studies major, which is, I mean, Kumi's question is something people struggle with. They know they want to do it, but they're not sure how to explain what they're gonna get from it, right? And it's all these intangibles uh, it seems intangible, but in the end, for most careers in this current global economy, um, these are very tangible skills that we just aren't used to recognizing. So um, I, I really appreciate the uh, that question as well as all these comments. I do see that in the um, in the chat we have uh, a question for Mandy. What's it like doing translating and interpreting as a CIR? That's from Kelly Young. Thank you, Kelly. Um, uh, what is it like doing translation? I would say I mainly, uh, I did translations for like pamphlets and um, uh, doc documents who, which are sent either from here in my city to uh, some of the G7 um, country embassies because I uh, our, my city held the G7 um, transport minister uh, minister meeting uh, last year and so that was part of uh, my main job last year but right now I'm also working on the translation for um, the garbage calendar um, and a, map, a manga from our uh, fishery section about how pearl cult cultivating it Pearl cultivating work and um, ama, which are the female divers. So I'm actually uh, translating several different kind of things. And for interpreting, I would say um, it's mainly for either um, visitors coming to my city or um, what else? And yeah, mainly for that and some. Uh, for foreigners who are living in my city when they come uh, to the city hall for some procedures. So yeah, that's uh, how my job looks like. And uh, I also saw another question about how, what surprised me about the Japanese working culture. Um, I would say, uh, we will always think that, you know, Japanese people are, you know, on time, or punctually and everything, which I mean, it, that's true, but also in my side, uh, I uh, what I mentioned earlier about how they sometimes as we do stuff uh, last minute, which I, um, that there's an event that they knew it's gonna happen. However, uh, whatever in the process, it took them so long to reach to me. Uh, and then, so I was like, mm, a little bit angry about that, but um, overall I would say, it's very indirect. That's the way how Japanese people communicate. So I guess it's very important to understand that part of the culture, which I believe we all know about that 
know about that from our Japanese classes already, but yeah, um, they're very polite. Yeah, just <laughs> everything, yeah. Uh, may I just take that question about, um, was there anything that surprised you about Japanese working culture? Can I just ask the other folks who are on the panel if they have other insights into Japanese work culture? Since many people do want to work in fields that involve them with um, Japanese companies or foundations. We could start with Megan, who's at the Japan Foundation. Um, hmm. I think that's what one of the things that surprised me most about the Japan Foundation is um, sometimes I'll be asked to do things and then not be given a like deadline. Um, so I've been told actually, no, 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 it's fine. You can, you can take more time to do this. So I'm like, oh, if there's no deadline, I got to get this done. Um, and then get told, oh, you, you, you could have, you could have given that to me like two days from now, it would have been fine. I'm like, oh, okay. So again, with that indirectness, um, definitely um, not being afraid to ask follow-up questions to make sure that you have the full picture you need, um, especially with the expectation that people coming from America tend to be a lot more direct. Um, follow, asking follow-up questions um, and is, I found very, very important um, as well as something people don't tend to get like super angry about. Like sometimes I feel like, okay, well, I feel bad asking, you know, 20 million follow-up questions, but I'm just trying to like, make sure I got the full picture. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's fine. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Glad we're on the same page on that then. So that, um, yeah, that indirect culture, but also not being afraid to, you know, and being able to generally speaking, follow up with all the questions that you need. Um, time time allowing of course I mean sometimes people are really busy but you know if if you know they have time you know, like hey I've got some follow-up questions can I ask you them now in 20 minutes later today um, to make sure that we're all on the same page that kind of communication and being willing and able to be that direct um, has been kind of a surprise and sometimes a challenge but um, yeah mm -hmm. uh Jacqueline, do you have anything to add to that? To the Japanese uh, work culture? Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely for sure. I would add like, for sure, you have to ask a lot of questions, uh, follow-up questions, just to sort of get more understanding of what they're asking for. Um, but also, I don't know, I guess maybe just because I'm working in a more um, digital space, so things are just communicated online. Um, but yeah, I think just for me, I encounter is that um, I also, maybe you might found, you might feel weird doing this, but just sort of constantly ask um, for approval in my experience, just because it's easier to sort of uh, see, um, have them approve your process rather than you doing everything, putting it out, and then suddenly they'll be like, hey, you did this all wrong. And you're like, what? Um, so definitely just whatever small thing you do, um, once you're done with it, ask it for approval rather than finishing the whole thing and putting it out there. Um, but also, um, aside from that, I've also worked on more independent creators. Um, so for instance, content creators online. And so obviously that's a completely um, thing that completely different thing that shocked me from Japanese, I guess, corporate culture and that independent creators, they're very casual. And um, it's very interesting how relaxed they are, um, even though for me, I'm like, oh, I'm working for you. So I should be more formal. But they're like, no, you're just talking to each other as if, you know, we're friends. And I was like, oh, OK, that's so shocking compared to corporate culture. <laughs> so that'll be a thing if you ever work with independent um, creators, um, that'll be a thing you'll encounter. <laughs> Uh, any, uh, Skylar or Derek, do you have anything to add to this conversation? I guess. Um, I, 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 have, I have, I have one anecdotal thing that I, that, I, that I can mention is that like, we have the, we, we get, we have the notion that like Japanese people in, in particular, like work very, work, work from like nine to past five. But, um, in in the in the in the in the case of in the, in the case of in the case of my friend who 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 who, de who developed a disaster not notification app, it's just it's just it's it's it's, it's just it's just a, it's just a small company, and he def he, and he definitely just like 
works in like a more um, American American culture, meaning that like we st he stops work he stops working after five. So 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 it's just like I think there I. I I, I think I think this is just like some some micro a microcosm, but it's just like work 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 culture is ch is ch is changing with like a new with like a newer generation of people. Yeah. Um, I noticed. Thank you. I noticed in the um, there's a a very specific question following up for Jacqueline from Gwen O'Brien. What independent creators did you work with, if you can say? Oh um, yeah. So for independent creators, um, I mostly work with um sort of live streamers, and so what that means is like these people they typically are you know just talking to a live audience um through a chat and they're streaming for hours on end, right? And then some of them um I can't name because I've worked with a lot, um, but some of them they um have various things that they're doing rather than um maybe they'll play video games or anything such as that. Um, I think one of my more per I guess closer ones who I've been working with for a long time, she is a singer, and so apart from you know doing talks online, she also makes music. And so she occasionally asks me to translate um, any sort of lyrics she has in Japanese to English so that she can also connect with an English speaking audience. And so, um, yeah, just any sort of live streamers, um, more specifically, I guess, mainly uh, VTubers, if you guys know what those are. Um, I've been working with them in more recent years. Um, but yeah, I work with uh, various independent creators from time to time. There's a question in the chat. Thank you, Jacqueline. There's a question in the chat from Michael Samiento. And I think it's one that uh, anyone could actually answer. This was directed towards Mandy. So Mandy, maybe you would start. But the question is, how do you get the foot, your foot in the door for the translation and interpretation? And I think it's a, actually a really good question for any of you. How do you get your foot in the door? Because it we haven't actually asked you this, but it sounds to me like for several of you, you did other things before you got the job you now have that we asked you about. And I think for undergraduates thinking about their own path, especially in this economy, it might be useful to know how you end up where in the job you have now and what kind of other, uh, other jobs you got straight out of the university or uh, out of JET. So, but Mandy, why don't you start with this one? about how you put in the door for translation and interpretation. Yeah, um, so for me, Jet, uh, I did, I am on Jet, so, but uh, it was right after I graduated. So I don't really have much to sp uh, say about uh, how after Jet, but um, for me personally, I was in, I am interested in translation and interpretation. So, um, I was just, I found love jet, it's a, it's a thing. And because I couldn't go uh, study abroad uh, due to COVID, uh, I decided that I really want to, you know, at least experience uh, staying in Japan, uh, lay, living in Japan. So I decided to go on the jet program and found out the jet, pro um, the jet program has the translation interpretation, the CIR part. So I was like, yeah, then that's where I uh, want to go. And then, um, yeah, I got in and then because for Jets, um, your placement would know that you are not a professional translator nor an interpreter. So uh, yet they still, you know, expect some um, prof a good level of translation and interpretation. So I just, you know, try my best to do what I can. And I'm in fact, actually starting next week, I'm going on to a, a, a translation and interpretation course um, that's uh, offered uh, by the chat program. So, uh, or the clear. So I would be, you know, doing some more intense study and in translation and interpretation. And hopefully that will be, you know, improving enhancing my um, job and yeah, my work mm -hmm. overall, yeah. Thank you. Would um, the others of you like to say something about what you did between UCSD and where you are now? That might be encouraging to some of our um, undergraduates. Yeah, I think for me, it's um, 
I think initially within the first year or so, I wasn't really getting a job that related to Japanese studies. Um, so I decided to take the initiative on my own. And so one of the things is online fan translations. And so as I mentioned before, with live streamers, um, you have like these really long six hour clips, right? But if you're trying to reach fans, you want to be able to have a quick um, video that they can watch. And so there's a huge community of just people translating Japanese um, content creators into English. And so for me, I was like, oh, I think I can do that as well, because um, you don't have to worry about copyright because, you know, you're not monetizing anything off of it. And even more so if you can help, you know, someone, a content creator you like and have mm -hmm. them expand, you know, into a different audience so that they can find more success. Success, I figured I was like, OK, well, that's a plus for me and plus for them. So I'll just do it and it's all free and it's just a hobby of mine. And then eventually that led me to be able to build a portfolio that led to my current career in digital marketing. So. That's an interesting cool. pathway. Thank you. <laughs> um, so for me, I actually graduated at the end of winter quarter 2019. Um, and I wasn't selected to go on JET until July. So what I ended up doing was a couple of different temp positions. Um, so I could, you know, pay rent, pay for my car, things like that. Um, and then I went on JET. And then my initial position upon coming back from JET also had nothing to do with Japanese. Um, I was working as an HR generalist for a startup um, because at the time I was like, oh, I had, I had seen a bunch of different positions in Japan for people with, you know, three years of HR generalist background in the U.S. Um, that would sponsor visas and all those kinds of things. So I went, okay, well, if I work this job for like three years, I can, you know, try and go back that way. Um, so maybe an additional caveat to my advice would be, you know, all paths lead to Rome. Um, so you can, you can take as much time or as little time as your particular path leads you, but, um, paths fork, paths diverge, get some turns, twists and turns in there. So, but you know, as long as you've got your general, general goal in mind, um, you know, you'll, you'll probably, probably find your way, um, we're also a decently large city. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, so while I was working that job, um, I was really trying to keep up with different Japanese learning sites like Wanikani, um, Native Shark, um, reading a whole bunch of manga that I had bought in Japan <laughs> in Japanese, um, and trying to keep up as much as possible that way. Um, if anyone's in the Los Angeles area, and I, I'm sure there are probably some down in San Diego too, but I've been going to like a language table on Thursdays so that I get some more casual conversation practice in as well as the business sides of things. Um, so keep, I don't know, keep, keep looking. <laughs> I, I, I don't have any really great um, concrete advice to give like Jackie or Mandy has. So sorry about that guys. <laughs> Derek, would you like to contribute? Well, uh, my path is probably the least, le the, the farthest away from re relevant to, Jap to Japanese studies. But um, this is this is more, my my path is more well suited for like a computer science type of event. It's really it's really just um, it, I I I got I got I got. I got I got the job straight out of college because I've done multiple internships at Google, mm -hmm. and that and that and 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 that and that was it. But uh, for all the for for the undergraduates in this Zoom chat, if you happen to be like uh, have any interest in like soft, software engineering in software engineering internships, you can you can start by like doing like pers personal projects. But honest, honestly, everyone has heard that before. So. Okay, so, um, yes. Is Skylar? Yes, hi. <laughs> um, I guess for me, I've always been interested in writing. So writing is my major career goal. And just to, I guess back me up on the literature department since I'm always interested in the different types of writing that 
well, through English has to offer. I'm interested in what other cultures also could offer in that field. So Korean is definitely one of them. And Japanese became a part of that as well. And I think that grew for me the most when I was in middle school. And I had the opportunity to learn Japanese in high school. So I guess that was sort of on my upper hand. And I was able to learn Korean at the same time. So I learned that for my four years of high school and just kind of, I didn't come to UC San Diego having Japanese major in mind. I had definitely just a literature writing portion down, but it felt somewhat like I'm abandoning that language that I've been learning so hard for four years. And all of a sudden I'm just saying goodbye to it. So of course I met up with Kumi and then we had a long conversation and she helped me figure out what I should do and um, convinced me to put a double major onto it. And then I also found career minor on the side as well. So that's what I'm continuing as well because there's a lot of things that I would love to properly deliver my message into different languages, but there's a barrier because of the words, but also because of the cultures that sets us apart. So I want to be able to properly translate on my own of my own words and hopefully deliver the same message that is delivered in English and into Japanese. Thank you, Skylar. Um, I noticed in the chat that Gwen O'Brien put in that there's also language tables every Friday as part of JSA on campus, if people are interested. So that's a very helpful uh, note as well. I, I know that there's no more questions in the chat, but I know we have um, uh, quite a few faculty joining us today. And I just wanted to see if, if any of you have any questions that you'd like to put to uh, anyone or to our panel before we uh, close. If not, then um, I think we are uh, coming to the end. Thank you everyone for participating. Uh, just uh, I'll just pick up on a couple of things that our alumni mentioned that I think um, that this idea, uh, first I just wanted to acknowledge that um, each one of you has been doing career development either during or immediately after the pandemic was at its worst. So congratulations to all of you managing to get through that in some kind, with some kind of an intact pathway, right? Because where it takes you from here, we don't know, but you've managed to overcome more than most people um, in recent generations have had to overcome at that stage of your life. Um, and then I just wanted to pick up on the, I think, uh, I think it was Megan who used the, I think casually used the idea about accidental networking. And I wanted to point out that what we're doing today is not accidental. This is planned networking, but accidental networking is a thing. And, um, all of you here on the panel have had that experience and it's part of what I'm hearing from each one of you is how you get where you are now. And so I wanted to just uh, invite everybody here to realize that if after we're done today, you have things that you would like to say or communicate or ask questions to anybody on the panel or to other alumni, we do have Akumi manages a lot of communication for us, and we are trying to develop an alumni, undergraduate, major, minor language student network uh, that really, I, I think that that increasingly um, this is gets easier to do because of our digital communication um, ability now, which some of you are actually pursuing careers related to. But also, I think this is a very important thing for you to use as a resource. So this is meant to be um, uh, networking that can be a resource for you in, for your own future. So and thank you to everybody here. Kumi, do you have any last thoughts before you close us out today? Uh, 
<laughs> yes, thank you. And I just want to say thank you to everyone. I mean, all the panelists and guest panelists and all the participants and uh, listeners to um, participate in this. This is very important and not everyone could attend today because of the schedule. It's it's Friday afternoon here or Saturday morning, early morning in Japan. <laughs> and um, I just want to make sure that everybody is aware of this community that they have. It's not just a degree. It's not just the classes they attend. I just want them to have a place where they can get to know the alumni and you know, stay connected to their peers. And this is one of the ways that we can, um, you know, showcase. So thank you so much for participating. And, uh, you know, all of your stories made me so proud of all of you. And I know all of you. And that almost made me cry <laughs> listening <laughs> to your stories. So thank you so much. And I'll definitely make sure that I'll share your stories with the current students and prospective students. And I always send them the link to our website where all your alumni testimonials are, you know, listed. So thank you. Thank you again. And please do stop by when you're in town. I know Mandy came by the other day. I was <laughs> I was leaving in a rush. So I was caught off guard and I was so glad to see you. But Jackie, you're in town too. So you have no choice but to come by. <laughs> and... Thanks again. Stay connected and stay tuned. We now have at Instagram too. So thanks. And thank you so much to Professor Turner, by the way. Um, you know, she has the 190, Japan 190, where everyone, you know, learns about putting their paper together, doing their independent research and all our language lectures who provide almost daily, um, what do you call it? opportunities to connect with each other that's just amazing of course their instruction is amazing but it's the heart that they put into each lesson so i appreciate every i appreciate everyone here and i love that we have this community on campus well said kumi i think we all agree thank you everybody for coming <laughs>